Your gifts through mission and service enable the church to continue to live into our commitments to healing and reconciliation. Today I'm chatting with Murray Pruden, National Executive Minister for Indigenous Ministries and Justice, to discuss the journey and the path forward. Murray, I'm really glad you're here today. Uh, pleasure to be here. And I wondered if you might be able to tell us a little bit about the Healing Fund and perhaps a story about the impact of that fund. Well, the Healing Fund program, uh, which is coordinated by one of my staff members in, in our unit, uh, is, is, is quite significant for our com Indigenous communities in this path, as, as the title says, for healing. Uh, we, we know that uh, based on the apologies, based on the TRC, based on so much that's happened to uh, all our, of our Indigenous nations across Canada, that we have an impact as the United Church of Canada, and mm -hmm. we need to we need to support and and help the journey of healing for our Indigenous peoples, and so the Healing Fund itself was. Is, is basically that, that uh, we we accept applications twice a year, uh, once in the spring, once in the fall, and we have a healing fund council committee that that will oversee the applications that come in and, uh, you know, uh, through uh, a, a a paneling and, and polling system will we'll make the better judgment of of which which programs and uh, platforms will will support. Mm -hmm. um, it, and it's and, and it and it's vastly great across um, across the spectrum. We have so many mm -hmm. different uh, 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 programs and services that we fulfill over the numerous years that we've been, uh, you know, u utilizing the healing fund. Uh, one one story <clears throat> that I, I really find passionate about because I I, I follow uh, the theater and 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 the creative arts. Is last year, uh, last year in November, we um, we supported a um, a theater project, a theater group in Terrace, BC, and um, and because of COVID as well, it was quite significant to get to get the you know get this play off the ground, and they've mm -hmm. been waiting and you know practicing, rehearsing, and waiting for for a time where the BC government government was going to allow people to be able to return to public spaces, to return to the theater. And so they were granted the opportunity. And uh, the group, uh, uh, Raven Theater, uh, invited me and, and some other members of the United Church to attend their opening. Uh, and it was remarkable. Um, it was called Bunk 7. And it was a, a, st a story based on residential schools that uh, uh, were where, where uh, uh, local members were in residential school in Edmonton. And so this is part of their story and their uprising uh, against the residential school systems as, as children. And uh, to see it uh, being played out by their local community members, both Indigenous and non-Indigenous in, in the roles, and actual youth uh, playing the roles of the young boys, it was just remarkable, but just uplifting to see that we... Um, can support our communities in this way that we're able to share these stories, and this is this is the gift of healing, uh, creatively. Mm -hmm. uh, if we don't share these stories, we don't heal as well. It's a powerful story of healing, yeah. and of course, the the country has and around the world, we've heard of the devastating discoveries of the children buried on residential school grounds. And I wonder how this impacts the work that you do. Well, it, it's been quite significant because majority of my staff uh, within the Indigenous Ministries and Justice Units are, are Indigenous, including myself, being Nihiao, Cree. And uh, yes, it's, it's, it, it, is, it, it left a mark because uh, right from the, the first call in Kamloops, BC, uh, in May of last year, uh, it it. it became an, uh, this idea that we have now to look at our relationships differently, uh, more concretely, uh, that, uh, that we had to really uh, pull back some of the, some of the uh, uh, programs and practices we were doing because of, 
uh, of so many hurt by, by so many di different indigenous peoples and nations from elders to youth uh, generationally. So we knew the impacts are real, but at the same time, uh, many of us knew these these stories, and in in that light, it's a bit of relief that we were that it's the truth actually has come out. But at the same time, we know that Kamloops became the ripple effect of much more to come after, with other unmarked graves being reported, more surveys being done. I think that people can can give more than just money but just support uh even just to say uh how can i help you or hey mm -hmm. can i listen hey let you know i want to listen to what your needs are and i always feel that that's the basis to great relationship building and also mending relationships that might have been broken uh in in the recent past and I wonder if you could speak a little bit about how mission and service uh, can support the work of Indigenous Church. Well, we've had uh, we've had uh, vision uh, missions and vision uh, catalog that we have every year, and mm -hmm. and like and, and when I started as well, I I never really paid attention to it to be honest, and until I I, I started uh, doing more of. Uh, the regional work and the, now the national work and notice that we have some really great uh, programs that that you know that are funded through uh, gifts with vision and, mm -hmm. and uh, one of them in particular uh, was food for the north that really I found really uh, amazing to hear about because in many of our northern communities in you know in uh, northern Manitoba and and northwest Ontario and also BC as well, like all our northern communities, you know, deal with high volumes of cost uh, mm -hmm. for 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 just basic food needs. And so the program was set up several years ago, and I think programs like that where we we know we can give back in 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 a in a communal way, but in a way where it's 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 just basic living, basic, mm -hmm. basic mm -hmm. living needs are being met. Uh, that that gives me some some pride that we've we've we're trying to uh, to accomplish things and I know setting an example for others and, and other organizations as well to follow suit. Um, things like that, but also things that you know uh, would be great to see is uh, really being upheld in many communities across Canada is our languages, uh, the loss mm -hmm. of our languages, the loss of uh, uh, of that identity, uh, and our languages are, you know, in in my my understanding, our, our languages are our connection to God and our connection to mm -hmm. Creator, a very spiritual, uh, you know, um, uphold up, up upholding. Um, you know, uh, presence, you know, we have that spiritual presence, but it also acknowledges us to land. So language uh, 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 revival or language, uh, up, uh, you know, um, needs are, are, are really something that, you know, we could see something that the United Church can, can also support. And I do know that we've had some uh, some applications uh, through the healing fund itself too, mm -hmm. to you know, for for these types of uh, engagements as well. I'm reminded when you of a of a, I think it was a mission and service funded uh, activity where youth, as you said, uh, were reclaiming their language through um, superhero videos, uh, right? Yes. And yep. Yep. Do you do you remember that project? Or? I do, I do, and I, yeah. I'm very. I was happy to see that, and you know, I hope to see more more of those types of programs come up as well. We also yeah. helped and supported a a, a very elongated project uh, with the with the Mohawk Nation uh, with the with the with the Mohawk language Bible and next year they're planning to actually have it finalized and published and, and, you know, have a, uh, a, a good ceremony for this, this work too. So we, we, we are like language and our youth are very important to us. And, yeah. uh, you know, I, I, it, it'd be great to see more, more impacts uh, across Canada in, uh, you know, in, in different ways. It, takes time it takes money and you know and it, it takes a, a lot of spirit and some leadership to do it and uh, i i believe that for me that's been part of my work and my my goal um in a sense to always to, 
to be a, a public servant in a sense, uh, a spiritual servant, and to help others see that the that the needs, but also to help tell the story of of so many, so that we don't forget uh, who we are uh, mm -hmm. as as uh, as Indigenous peoples, as uh, but also as as Christian people too. That we all need to work together to to uh, support one another, or that bridge won't get built. <laughs> It's, it's to see God creator, to see Christ in the other. There's certainly lots there that speaks to uh, both the indigenous tradition, the Christian tradition that I see you embracing in our church, embracing and living into this call to be a bridge between the two. Um, mm. I wonder if there's anything that you think our donors need to know at this time that we might not know about the work that the Indigenous Church is doing? Well, uh, the indige Indigenous Church is is going th uh, through some um, church restructuring, for one thing. And uh, so it, that, I know, takes some mindset and some time and, and partnership with the non-Indigenous Church. Uh, and we're looking at at this, this idea of... Um, creating the church in in our in in our way as being an opportunity to to learn from from one another mm -hmm. so the the church uh, indigenous church uh, restructuring is 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 a goal indeed one thing that uh, the indigenous church really wants in, in order to move forward is is creating uh, good relationships partnerships with the non-indigenous church um, that we we see a great alliance with the visible minority members within the united church of canada uh, and and just just uh we're, we're in a path of renewal that we are we are looking forward to uh, walking hand in hand and being part of the United Church with the rest of the church. We want to be uh, as good as a relation and neighbor to to all those that are willing to to walk with us. Uh, and so the restructuring is 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 definitely a goal. Um, there there could be much. Uh, uh, recognition of that uh, in the topic of reconciliation, but also for healing. Um, and I think one, another thing that I would really uh, like the non-Indigenous -indig church membership to understand is pick up the caretaker's report, uh, the calls mm -hmm. to the church, because that's highly important to the Indigenous church. Uh, there are nine, nine calls uh, with the preamble of, of what we we distinguish as being the indigenous church and really pick that up and and read those calls because that actually tells the story of of who we are where we want to be and what we want to establish with within the united church of canada the healing fund and the you know gifts with vision and and our our united church foundation um you know, without those those means, uh, the uh, the Indigenous Church uh, would not be at the level where we're at, and and we need our 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 needs are no different than any other church community or any other project that that's out there. And uh, without those types of supports uh, and and services, we 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 wouldn't have. Uh, the capability to create programs of healing, uh, and and also these partnerships that we 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 look so forward to to establishing. A third thing I'll add in that that might be of interest too is uh, we we when we look at the indigenous church, we also have to look with with some vision of change. Uh, and I know change can come in in various and many different ways. Uh, for the last several years, we've been um, looking forward to establishing more urban and Indigenous ministries and, and what that looks like. So we've created now some new circle uh, for urban Indigenous ministries to start, you know, impacting and, and creating that foundation and uh, that sense of, of community uh, so that we can try to start establishing that much more across Canada. Uh, understandably that, 
you know, uh, many municipalities uh, have high uh, indigenous uh, population that we feel that our presence would be also greatly appreciated in these urban settings as well. So we're we're looking forward to that and and creating that within the indigenous church, and of course that you know comes with great gifts of healing and understanding and and also relationship building because you're not just talking about one group a uh, group of people you're talking of many nations uh, uh living in an urban center that are wanting to uh still participate in in uh, either christianity or spirituality or faith or or just community building and we really see that being an impact uh for the indigenous church Thank you, Murray. I want to give gratitude for the work that you do in Indigenous ministries and justice, for the work of the staff, um, and for those in the church that are supporting this work. It's clearly one of Canada's most important areas of, of justice work and the church's most important areas in terms of healing. And So great gratitude for you today. Thank you for, for being with us. Thank you. Your gifts for mission and service will help support important programs for healing, learning, and teaching.